this is important to talk about. We need time for reflection and contemplation. If we're dealing with 100, 200 emails, and we're sending out dozens of text messages and back and forth, we're dealing with bits, bits of information. Some of them are pretty trivial and gossipy. We have to move information, connect it to knowledge, connect it to judgment, and then connect it to wisdom. And you simply can't be inundated by communication gadgets. I think the young have lost any sense of privacy with the internet these days and their own Facebook. They don't have a sense of privacy. And I, I suppose I'll leave it to the psychologists to figure out the consequences of that for their own personality, their own development, their own sense of initiative uh, in controversial situations as citizens, uh, their own uh, level of reflection and abstraction. The knowledge revolution is not, pro not producing a democratic revolution. See, the, we're, we're, whether we're too overwhelmed, it's too much, uh, like we're, you know, being stuffed with this stuff. There are great websites, as you say, uh, and, and uh, blogs. There are some pretty bad ones, too. Uh, but it's not working. And we have to ask why, when everything is at your fingertips, you know, you, you may not be able to, to buy a lot of books or subscribe to a lot of magazines, but on the Internet, you can get a huge amount of material instantly, virtually not for nothing. And it's not changing whether people are turning out on the ground for town meetings, for voting, for gatherings, for initiatory democracy. And this, this is a, a tremendously stunning revelation to those who believe that knowledge is action. Knowledge leads to action. Unless we become aware of what's happening to us and what this technology is doing and try to turn this technology to productive uses instead of trivial uses, introverting uses, gossipy uses, uh, th they're going to be a menace. The technology will be a major menace to any kind of uh, turnaround in, in a putative democratic society.